Today's lesson is on properties of equality. It's, an, it's a really basic algebra lesson or pre-algebra lesson. Um, if you have some kind of a problem that's posed where you have an unknown number, you might write an equation using a variable to stand for the unknown number. And then you would use inverse operations to solve for the variable. So you have to know what undoes multiplication, what undoes division, what's the inverse of addition and the inverse of subtraction. So if you know that, like say in the first one, if you knew that nine times a number was equal to 72, you could do something with nine and 72 to figure out what the unknown number was. And that would do be using the inverse operation. So what's the inverse operation of multiplication? And the answer to that is division. So they undo each other. If you have a multiplication um, equation and you want to uh, undo it, you can use division. Likewise, if there's a division involved in an equation, you can undo that by multiplying. And then um, we can use the word opposites for addition. Addition and what operation are opposites? And the answer to that would be subtraction. Sorry, that's a really weird looking U. So we're going to go through the four properties of equality, and they're all very much like each other. So once you really get the, the subtraction property of equality, you will be able to just substitute the word addition, division, and multiplication in for the others. But they all basically say, if you whatever you do to one side of an equation, you can do to the other side of the equation, and the two sides will remain equal. So when we're talking about subtraction, we would say if the same number is subtracted from both sides of an equation, the two sides remain equal. So the, the way we're going to, there's sort of a standard way of solving these equations. First, you copy the equation. So I've already copied this one down. n plus 7 equals 10. So that's step number one of three steps. Step number two is, um, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you in classic, just cover, if you're not sure what to do, you can just cover up that variable. So imagine that you don't see the n there. And what you do see is add 7 and ask, what's the opposite of add 7, which would be subtract 7. So we're using subtraction, which in, we're doing subtraction property of equality. So this is a zero pair, the positive 7 and the negative 7. Add 7, subtract 7 gives you zero. So over on the left side, some algebra teachers like to tell you just draw a line right down the paper. And you have the equal sign. And you're separating the left side from the right side. Can you do that? So this would leave us with n on the left, n 10 minus 7 is 3, and that's the answer. And then the last step would be go back in and check and make sure that if we put 3 in for n, which we would do this way, 3 plus 7, do we get a true statement, which we do, 3 plus 7 is 10. So that's the subtraction property equality, and I can go pretty quickly through the others because they're all very similar to that. For addition, property of equality, you say if the same number is added to both sides of an equation, the two sides remain equal. So if we have a minus 18 equals 32, if I copy the equation, that's the first thing. Second step is do the what's being done to the variable. The variable is a. I'm subtracting 18. Well, the opposite is to add 18. And whatever I do to the left side, I have to do to the right side. So I have to add 18 here. This is the, the addition property of equality. There's a zero pair. Add 18, subtract 18 is a zero pair, leaving a equals 50. Now I'll do 50 minus 18 equals 32. And it does. So it's right. I rewrote the division property equality in slightly different words than what you would read in your book. Your book says, if both sides of an equation are divided by the same number, the two sides remain equal. Then I change it to say that if every term on both sides of an equation is divided by the same number, the two sides remain equal. It's a slight difference, but with division multiplication, um, unlike addition and subtraction, you have to divide or multiply every term on both sides for it to remain, for the sides to remain equal. Now most, a lot of times you only have one term on the left side and one term on the right side, and that's going to be the case in this lesson. So I suppose we have um, 9 times the number 
equals 16. So how would we do this? We would um, you see that we're multiplying. If we would cover up the a, you would just see the multiplication property equality very similar to division. If every term on both sides of an equation is multiplied by the same number, the two sides remain equal. So if we had a number, we're trying to figure out what that number is, but if you divide it by 6, you get 12. Now, one of the things you might just, if you just went by intuition, you might say, oh, it's 2, but that wouldn't make any sense because 2 divided by 6 is not 12. So if you follow the process, you see that you're dividing by 6, and what's the, the inverse of dividing by 6, which is multiplying by 6? And here I like to use parentheses to show the multiplication. So you've copied the equation, n divided by 6 equals 12. Then you apply the multiplication property of equality. Multiply both sides by 6. Over here, that would be 6n over 6. It would be 6n over 6. The 6's would cancel, leaving you n. And then you have to do, you probably know your 12 times tables, right? So you wouldn't have to come over to the side and do this. But it's okay if you do. And it's 72. Then you would try, say, okay, I'm going to check that. 72 divided by 6. Is that 12? And sure enough, it would be. So that's the properties of equality. Basically summing it up, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you can do the other side of the equation, and the two sides will remain equal.